365 and you stream John Sega here with Kevin Barnett. It's the BS report here on a Tuesday evening. It is approximately 8:30 and we've got our Super Bowl predictions in. For recap, I had the Denver Broncos 24-21. You had the Seattle Seahawks 17 to 14. I had Peyton Manning as MVP and you yourself you had Marshawn Lynch, the beast mode who just signed uh just signed an endorsement deal with the uh, with Skittles. Skittles. Yeah, that took him long enough. Yeah, it's just it's a smart thing. Um but now let's get let's get into the recap of the NFL season because it's a America sport right now. Uh, it's coming down to its final game. It's time to pick some award winners. And because you don't know anything about hockey. <laughs> it's just true. I do not know anything about hockey. I know if the Bruins win or lose, and that's about it. Bruins are right now second in the Eastern Conference. I know, and they're winning right now, so life is good. Um, but, all right, let's get to the award winners. Let's first start with the most obvious. Who do you have as MVP of the National Football League? I think it's most obvious. We'll agree with this. I would be shocked if it's not unanimous, if it's not unanimously mm -hmm. Peyton Manning. I completely Looking agree. Looking to become with you. only the uh, second uh, unanimous MVP behind Tom Brady, who did so. 2007. Three years, no, three years ago. Was it three years ago? Yes, was... Brady actually got 49. Brett Favre had a vote that year. Did he really? Brett Favre had a vote that year. That writer should that. be fired. Oh. <laughs> well, hey, Favre, Favre did have a good year that year. Let's be real. Okay. Anyways, we I agree. Peyton Manning MVP, hands down. I think without a doubt is the MVP this year. He set the new touchdown passing record. He also set the new passing record. Basically, rewrote every record you could possibly imagine. Doing this after neck surgery, after neck surgery, after neck surgery. And I, yeah, I also think that um, he is uh, gonna win Offensive Player of the Year as well. Agreed. All, I mean, I don't really, I'm not really for the MVP getting the same thing as Offensive Player of the Year. But how could you not this year though? It's it's too. I mean, you have to. He had the best season any quarterback has ever had. Not even close. Fifty five yep. touchdowns. Unthinkable. 55 touchdown pass. He started off the year great with 70. He never stopped. Yeah. Un unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. All right. Moving on. We both got Peyton Manning for MVP. An interesting one with a lot of candidates. Coach of the year. You know what? I broke my, my coach of the year list down into about three or four guys I think were viable candidates. Okay. Let's come off. I, I'm going to start off with Andy Reid. Agreed. He's definitely a candidate. Ron Rivera. Definitely a candidate. Carolina. Mm -hmm. Bill Belichick. My man. Definitely uh, candidate. That's who I kind of narrowed it down to. Ron Rivera, uh, Andy Reid, and Bill Belichick. If you had to go on with what they, what you had to overcome, actually, I think it would be Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he's going to get it because, A, the Patriots have won the division, what, now 10 of 11 exactly. years in a row. I don't think he's going to get it because they were not. Honestly, I was watching him, and I'm not saying. I don't think they're that talented. They really aren't that talented, New England. They got a lot of good pieces in them. But with all the injuries they had to overcome in the playoffs, when I watched them against the Colts, I was like, I just don't know how they do it. I didn't know how they do it. They, they kicked the Colts' butts, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like guys like LeGarrette Bunt, Jamie Collins had a big game that day. With all those guys like Gronk and Luzen Welker. Like, well, Gronk hurt, Luzen Welker. Will Fork, Mayo, Mayo. Will Fork. Spikes also as well Spikes in the playoffs. Spikes in the playoffs. I was shocked. But I don't think they're going to give it to Belichick just because of how good they've been for so long. And, no, the media doesn't really like Belichick either. either. So he's definitely at a disadvantage there. I think, though, I mean, it's a real I think it's a real toss-up between Ron Rivera and Andy Reid. But if you ha if I honestly had to pick Coach of the Year, I would give it to Ron Rivera. And he just got a three-year contract extension. I would give it to too. Ron Because you know why? Andy Reid... With um yes the Chiefs weren't yes the Chiefs weren't very good last year but at the same time the Chiefs had what seven Pro Bowlers last year mm -hmm. Chiefs had talent going into mm -hmm. the season all they needed was a good coach and he reads he's been he's an established coach he implemented his system which was perfect and then he also had a quarterback who could run a system perfectly in Alex Smith mm -hmm. um but I, Carolina was a better football team I thought though. They had, they were not a good football team last year either. And Ron Rivera, whose job was really on the hot seat. At the oh, he was. Year. He was definitely in the hot seat they started, the year. They started out 0-2. The Chiefs started out 9-0. and And the Panthers started out 0-2, and, and they had ended up— uh, Yeah, they ended the year, frankly, on different paths. Carolina was getting really hot at the right time, and Kansas City, by the, the end, was faltering just a little bit. They both had the same record. Oh, no, actually, uh, Carolina had a better record. Carolina did have a Carolina better record, Carolina had a better yes, record, a record a for record. a team that started 0-2 to the Chiefs 9-0. See the funny thing about Chiefs, they only lost six games. They lost six games to three teams. Mm -hmm. They lost to three teams twice. So, but I would give it to Ron Rivera. Uh, listen, I, I that, that's a fantastic choice. Um, I think there are a ton of candidates. Uh, Andy and um, Andy Reid definitely won. Ron Rivera definitely won. Bill Belichick, I think, is definitely on the list. Also, you can't overlook Chip Kelly. First year, fantastic first job, year yeah. NFL head coach, bringing in a system nobody thought would work, and he tinkered it. In the middle of the season. For a guy who traditionally can't run that system exactly. either. Exactly. Nick Foles had a phenomenal year. Uh, listen, I think 
I think Chip Kelly's definitely in the conversation. Also, they didn't make the playoffs for Bruce Arians in Arizona. Fantastic, yeah. If Arizona made the playoffs, he'd be in this conversation right now. Big time. Uh, I think he still should be. I think he still should be. He wouldn't win it also because he won Coach of the Year last year. Listen, back-to-back would be uh, incredible. Um, Listen, I agree with you. I don't think they're going to give it to Andy Reid because they faltered at the end and they didn't win a playoff game. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna give it to Bill Belichick because no one. I mean, granted, you have a you have a Hall of Fame quarterback in Tom Brady, so you already have that established, and you did overcome a lot of injuries. This but you paper, also play. This on paper was their worst team in a couple of years, I thought too. And no. you still made it to the AFC. Yes, I know voting is done before the playoffs, though I believe. And they also, but they also play in the AFC East, which wasn't strong this year. I think that's also gonna hurt uh, the Patriots. I think it comes down to Chip Kelly and Ron Rivera, and for me, it's a really a complete toss up between those two. Yeah. Because by the end of the season, the Eagles' offense was flying full force, and it was terrifying. That game, that game, it meant nothing to them, and they put a 54 on the Bears. I exactly, uh, it was absolutely great. Um, but again, I think I'm going to go with Ron Rivera. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's by a slight teeny you had edge a, a, for Ron Rivera. A kid who well, many people were questioning his maturity in Cam Newton. You have an aging Steve Smith who's unbelievable. How he's mm-hmm. still on a player. I can't believe he's still good. He's he's designed for speed. Mm-hmm. I I can't believe how good he is now. Mm-hmm. Um, you had a questionable running game coming into the year with Williams, you know, uh, getting hurt. But then uh, there, Luke Keekley, I know, yes, I know Boston College. I know. Boston College! That defense was a force to be reckoned with. And when you look at the teams that they beat, too, mm-hmm. they beat some really good teams. They did, they did beat some really good teams. Listen, they were, they were a grinding team, and I think, I think Ron Rivera, he was on the hot seat, and to be able to really t- dispel all the critics... In one, one fell, fell swoop. One twelve and two in yeah. the last 14 weeks. Well, one fell swoop, every single critic was gone. Um, I think he wins it by a slight edge over Chip Kelly. If Chip Kelly won a playoff game or it, or got farther in the playoffs. Isn't the voting done before the playoffs, though? Again, but this yeah. is this is in my mind. This, oh, is, this okay. is in this my is Sanko's mind. This okay. is in my mind. If Chip Kelly was able to advance in the playoffs, um, I think that he would he would have gotten my vote. But Ron Rivera for getting be able to get the bye. Uh, and then to lose to a San Francisco team who was more talented. And they still beat them in the regular and season. And they still beat them in the regular in season. Candle six. Um, and but I think San Francisco was more talented than, yes, Car- than Carolina anyway. Uh, I don't hold that loss really against them much, so that's why I think it goes around Rivera slightly. Okay. Also, well, though, I do want to point out, Offensive Player of the Year, they might give it to Jamal Charles over Peyton Manning. You think so? I thought I thought maybe McCoy may have had a better year than Charles. Fantasy-wise, Charles, because we both had Charles, I know, on our team. So Wait, what did you finish in fantasy? I finished third. I finished second for the second straight year. I finished third. Uh, I had a... um. I went up a kid, uh, Peyton Manning. I went. Week 16 was our semifinals, actually. Okay. Uh, week 16 was our semifinals. So I uh, went up against Peyton Manning, who played Houston, and he dropped four touchdown passes. Andrew rough. Luck only got me 14 points, even though they beat the, the Chiefs that week. So, and then um, Pierre Garcon had a good week for him. But where he where he got he beat me by like 23 points. Where he really got me was, I had started the, um, I had started the, um, the Titans defense against Jacksonville. That's, that's understandable. Yeah, but the Colts had 17 points that week against Kansas City, yeah. which I didn't expect, and I wasn't a fan of starting my defense against my running back, my my, my best player. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, and then he also had Edwin Baker of the Browns, mm-hmm. and I have Josh Gordon. And then Baker took away Gordon's touchdowns, which would always go to Gordon. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, but Josh Gordon, he was a stud. I loved having him. On he my will team. be one of, if not the top wide receiver pick next year. Um, he, he was the top overall receiver in fantasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I think he'll be yeah. uh, he'll be one of the first three Megatron, wide receivers. You always have to go with Megatron, Calvin John. I mean AJ Green, um, well, maybe as the top two, I'd say. But you know, Josh Gordon was a stud this year, and he did it with three different quarterbacks. Yeah, that's true. All right, so we're sidetracking. We're sidetracking. Okay, yes, we already covered MVP. We already covered Coach of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year. Who you got? Defensive Player of the Year. Um, there's a, a lot of good. I mean, people are saying Earl Thomas and Richard Sherman, Luke Keekley, man, though Luke Keekley. Kevin Barnett speaks fantastic words of wisdom. Luke Keekley. My man. He, I mean, yeah, he may have mugged Gronkowski in the end zone. Let's not remember that moment. But, oh, I will, okay. I, I like playing with you in that, but, you know. <laughs> um, no, uh, he's just, he's a, he's a tackling machine, and he was the leader of a big turnaround on that defense. I mean, yeah, we give Rivera coach of the year. Definitely, I agree with that, but. Without Luke Keekley, I don't think that defense is the same. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be Defensive Rookie of the Year, and in our, both our minds, Defensive Player of the Year this year. He's a second-year player, actually. Yeah, no, again, oh, last yeah, year, Defensive yeah. Rookie of the Year, this year like, to be Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. He's he's marking himself as one of the top 
oh. linebackers in the NFL in only his second Patrick season. Patrick Willis, you could hear an argument for even maybe, but you know. he was hurt. He was hurt a little he bit this hurt, season. When he did play. He was dominant. Oh no, I agree. He I think it goes. Uh, I think it goes Luke Keekley. Then I think you have to do Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman, yeah. Absolutely. And then I'd put Earl Thomas third behind Richard Sherman. I agree. I can definitely see the argument for both. All right, so we got all those awards out of the way. And before we take another break and before we delve into— I don't know. Into... We did not, actually. We had the all rookies of the year. Oh, the rookies of the year. That's just true. Who you got? I mean, defense, I think we— You got defensive rookie. Kiko Alonso, honestly. Yes, a Buffalo linebacker. Yes. That's right. Yep. I mean, he he, he goes in the defensive player of the year. See, offensive player of the year, I'm going to go. I'd first I halfway to Giovanni Bernard. But now, I'm, not, I'm still not going Eddie Lacy. I'm going Keenan Allen. We are in agreement today. Keenan, Keenan Allen, Allen came out of nowhere for San Diego. He was originally committed as a free safety to Alabama. A free safety. I remember that, too. And then all of a sudden, I, I remember reading on Rivals.com. That's my source for recruiting, honestly, for mm -hmm. high school recruiting. I, I follow that. He, uh, They said, can Cal land uh, Alabama safety uh, and Al Alabama commit uh, Keenan Allen? I was like, why would you ever leave Alabama and go to Cal? Saban apparently said, no, you're not playing receiver. We're too loaded here already. We don't need you yeah. to play receiver, and we don't think you're going to be good enough. So then Keenan Allen basically is just like, you know what? Now I'm going to Cal. Yeah, screw you, Nick Saban. How many now, people say that? Now I'm going to Cal. And at first it didn't look good because he wasn't good when he first started receiver Cal, and they went to AS and moved back to safety. And apparently he begged and pleaded with the coaching staff and said, please let me play receiver. Give me a chance. The rest is history. He had over a thousand receiving yards and he had eight touchdowns this year, and he played a fantastic in the playoffs too. Yeah, no, listen, I I agree. It Nothing was to against Eddie Lacy because without them they wouldn't have even been without him they wouldn't have even been close. No, to the again, I think it was, I think it was the shell shock that Keenan Allen provided because no one expected it. People expected Eddie Lacy to be good. No one expected Keenan Allen to do what he did, and that's why I think you have to give it to him because he rose from nowhere. Hmm. And I, I I agree with you, Keenan Allen. I think definitely. Uh, San Diego, he's a big reason why they made that playoff I mean, push. It is a big toss-up because without Eddie Lacy, the Packers don't make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But the Rodgers hurt all this week. He stepped up big time. He did. The defense is gunning for him. But I think when it just comes to overall performance, Keenan Allen established himself as like a, a legitimate number one receiver after one year in the NFL already. That's true. So that's I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. We both got that. All right, so now we, now we got all the awards. We agreed a lot on the awards. I'm scared. Uh, we scared, agreed a lot honestly. in the awards, but all right, let's get to this. Uh, before we take a commercial break and before we delve into NBA, I want to get what was your most memorable moment of this NFL season? What moment stood out to you more than any other that's still locked in your head? Um, There's always so many, and, and there's always so many. I mean, I don't really want I mean, I'm, I'm going to shy away probably from my New York Giants, honestly. Okay. And on, I, I think the moment that honestly stood out to me, I mean, when I – was probably Peyton Manning's return to Den or to Indianapolis. Honestly, that was a great moment. I, that that was my. That's that was probably what I would uh, go with. Honestly, I mean, just because you know, I know you, you as a Patriot fan, I know could say this. He's been your biggest rival. Oh, for a personal football. rivalry? Yes. Yeah. Hands down. But you, it's still hard to dislike the guy. I listen. He is a classy human. Peyton dude. Manning as a person is one of the best humans on this planet. I mean, as a football player. He is He's, terrible to play against. You uh, would not want to play against him. Listen, this year he has risen up in the conversation for best quarterback. That tribute of all that time. they had though, when they have a when they have a kid who probably has a chance to be better than Peyton Manning, they have their own kid. and They still were warming up to Peyton Manning like mm -hmm. that was unbelievable. I thought. Yeah, uh, I mean, listen, that was an absolutely great moment. Um, I'm gonna go my my three two one. My third most memorable moment: the Colts come back against the Chiefs in the playoffs. Yeah, that was. Great. For to start off the playoffs with that was just wow. Just that comeback was absolutely amazing. I'm watching that in a hotel room. I'm on a road trip with the women's basketball team, and me and my buddy Mike Rich is just going nuts. Yeah, and the Chiefs, the Chiefs had poor them. They, yeah. well, they had so many people. And get hurt they competed that. in that game with Jamal Charles getting hurt too. It wasn't that, just Jamal Charles. Exactly, got everyone hurt. was getting yeah. hurt. They still competed, and then the Colts were able to come back. Remarkable game. Uh, number two for me, the Patriots come back winning against the Broncos. Because all hope seemed to be lost, and then just like that, they were able to come out of nowhere and get that dub. Incredible game. I think, regardless, I'm a Patriots fan, so obviously it was great for me. But I think as a football fan, that it's game, game to watch. fantastic because that Brady Manning rivalry. That game was that game was more entertaining than the playoff game. I think I think definitely without a doubt. But the number one moment for me, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sticking with my Patriots. It was the Patriots comeback against New Orleans. Because that see, day, I missed that game actually. See so. that day, th the reason that game was so amazing is because it was a prelude to, to David the, Ortiz hitting grand that grand slam, slam. And the bullpen cop. And that day, as a whole, is one of my favorite days ever as a sports fan. To understand. And that first comeback, the Patriots coming, Cambro Tompkins catching that touchdown in the corner from Brady against the Saints, will always live in my head 
as one of the, a great final drive and then a prelude to one of the greatest Boston sporting events ever. You're lucky you have that because I'm a Rangers, Rangers, Mets, and Knicks fan. So I've only had the Giants really in my hey, life. Hey, you got so. that stadium win though the other day against the Devils. You know what? It was fantastic. I went to the Winter Classic and I, I and I, you know, what? I went to the Winter Classic. Um, when the Rangers play in Philadelphia. And now I wish, I mean, I'm not going to the Yankee Stadium games, but I wish, honestly, because A, Yankee Stadium looks beautiful for it. It looks fantastic. The ice was terrible, though. I'll give them that. Like, the yeah, ice there, was there not was a delay because there was sun glare, sun, right? No, the actual ice. Yeah, you see the, the puck keeps going on. I'm a huge hockey fan, and honestly, it's it was spectacular to watch that game. And then my Rangers dominated it. So. They did, and they put they up did. six goals on Martin Brodeur. Mm-hmm. So. And I've never let. I mean, I respect Martin Brodeur as a hockey goalie. I mean, he's more known, more well known than most hockey players to the general public, to people who don't follow hockey. But it was great putting up six goals on him. I, I'm I'm sure it was him being yeah. so good for so long. Yeah. All right, so there we go. That's our NFL talk. He's we also, losing his job to a Boston College guy, actually. Too. Boston College, dominant in hockey. Um, but that's the NFL talk, and then we of course delve into a little bit and a little bit of NHL for yeah. you. Um, we'll come back after this short commercial break, uh, talking to the developments of the NBA. Can anyone stop Kevin Durant? And who is the best team in the NBA right now? We'll take a short commercial break. This is the BS Report on Live365.com.